fifth commandment is, Thou shalt honor thy father and thy mother. We don't seem to have a problem doing that with our mothers. I look in my 50-something year old files, filing cabinet of sermons this past week and saw that uh, maybe three to one are my lessons through the years to mothers and instead of fathers. But I'm going to get back today, today, this morning and tonight, that even that up a little bit. Sort of like the cartoons this morning, the classic Peanuts and the Earl Citizen. Lucy and two little girls are skipping rope. And one of the girls says, you know, on Valentine's Day, I gave my mother a real nice Valentine that I made at school. And I even gave my grandpa a present on Groundhog's Day. Another friend of Lucy says, how about St. Patrick's Day? I sent my uncle in Boston a nice cart, and on the first day of spring, I always give my mother flowers. Lucy said, you know, Mother's Day is neat. I always get mom something real nice on Mother's Day. But what about today? What did you give your father today? One of the girls says, today? Good grief, I forgot about today. And then Lucy said, oh well, my dad won't say anything. He might sigh, but he won't say anything. That's what's good about Father's Day. You don't even have to remember it. <laughs> well, a lot of truth there, I'm afraid. The best concept of our Godhead is Father. In fact, it's the most often repeated expression of God is Father. Jesus prayed, Our Father, which art in heaven. And if you have a good father or had a good father, I think it helps us in understanding the nature of our Heavenly Father to some degree. Not that they compare, but some of the some of the ways they handle things, some of the things they shared with us or helped us with makes us maybe appreciate the concept of our Father which art in heaven. Fathers are so important to the happiness of children. No question about that. So many boys and girls have striven all their life to try to be like their dad or to for their father just to be proud of them. I could tell you individuals what surprise you, that that has been the constant demon in their life. If they could only hear from their father that he loved them, if they could one time hear him say, I love you, one time say he was proud of them, one time express deep needs within their heart, but they've never shared and received those, and it drives them or our self-esteem, our relationship with our fathers is very important. Psychiatrists say, if you have a good relationship with your father, it helps you to be more confident, not that it answers all the needs. What about security? We look to our fathers for security, a roof over our head and something to eat and keep the bad guys away at nighttime and the darkness and the fears. We look to our fathers for protection. So they are so important in many of our lives. I wanted, in this little simple sermon I made up this week, to make an acrostic of the word Father, the six letters and the word Father, and just take some Bible characters that maybe not represent the six letters. I don't know that they all were fathers. I know some of them were, maybe all of them, but I don't know that. But some of the principles within these six letters Six names are good for fathers, or would be good qualities for any father to have. What about L? Did you know there's only three Fs in the Bible, the whole Bible, from Kiver to Kiver? Felix and Festus were two Roman governors, but then there's a brother that Paul made reference to, Bartimaeus, F-O-R-T-U-N-A, accent on the N-A, Natus. Fortunatus. He is referred to by Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 17 and 18. I was glad at the coming of Stephanus, he tells the church of Corinth, and Fortunatus, and Achaicus. For that which was lacking on your part, they have supplied. For they have refreshed my spirit and your spirit. Therefore, according 
acknowledge ye them that are such. Paul and his work with congregations had these brethren to come along and to give him, as he called it, refreshed his spirit and help with his supplies, his needs. The church of Carmen helped him some financially. Sometimes he had to stop and make tents for a while. But also these brethren, he said in verse 16, supplying my needs. Fortinus was a, a brother. That's what fathers do. They supply to the best of their ability the needs of the family if they are what they should be. I know Paul said if a man uh, not, does not take care of his own, even they of his own household, he's denied the faith and he's worse than an infidel. There are some fathers who are lazy. There are some fathers who are given into the bottle and the drinking and are not much of an example or a provider or a supplier. But the God-fearing good fathers are suppliers like for the dads. He, amen. He supplies my need, Paul said. And he refreshes my spirit. You know, Paul warned, fathers, don't be so hard on your children that you drive them to wrath. You fathers, provoke not your children to anger. Provoke not your children to wrath. Be, let them see some love and kindness and support. Not always harshness, always putting down, always ridiculing, always making light of or fun of. Paul said, no, fathers do not provoke them to wrath. We need those who would, like Fortinaeus, refresh our spirits, supply our needs. That's a good father. A. Well, A's got to be, you know about who A's got to be. It's got to be Abraham. His name means the father of a multitude. So he's got to be the A in our acrostic this morning, a father. Father's well, logic is said, but Abraham is a father. The greatest scene of all, of course, is when our father, Heavenly Father, asked him to give his only son as a sacrifice, a burnt offering. And early in the morning, he took off. I would have put it off as long as I could have, but not Abraham. He took off, took Isaac with him, his son, and they had the fire and uh, everything they needed was a sacrifice. And Abraham could only say, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. We're, we're not going to worry about that, son. Where's the, where the offering? The Lord will provide. Got up there, raised his knife, and there behind him was a ram caught with his horns in the thicket and the Lord provided and God blessed Abraham and said because you have been faithful unto me and have proven your word to me I will make you the father of a multitude of people as the sands of the sea fathers good fathers trust in God and they don't always have the answers and they don't always know the best and right things to do but if they can share to their families trust in God the Lord will provide. If they can be an example of that in times of stress and need and heartache and hurt, if we can look to our fathers and find that encouragement, the Lord will provide. I don't know how. It's sort of like a, um, the study in the Bible study this morning with Brother Bob there about the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I don't, I don't know how he's going to do it. You know, They were basically telling Nebuchadnezzar, but he's going to provide for us. And if he doesn't, that's okay. That's all right. What faith and courage uh, that they share. That's what we as fathers need to do. Be examples of putting our trust in God and letting our children know that uh, as we try to lead the home and family. What about uh, T, F-A-T? Titus, he'd be a good one. Timothy, oh, he's one of my favorites. No, I got a brother. I'm trying to pick ones maybe not so often referred to. What about Brother Thaddeus? <laughs> that, that's a difficult name. How would you like to go to Park New School and be named Thaddeus? Well, I tell you, you'd be tough skin. But old Thaddeus, uh, he had another name. His name was Judas. But um, he had two names. Thaddeus. What, what do you know about him? Well, we, we got a little reference here. Let's go to John 14. And we read in verse 22, Judas saith unto him, now John's writing this, and John's real quick said, oh, wait a minute, now when you're reading this, I want you to know I'm not talking about Iscariot. That's Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed the Lord. Uh, that's not the Judas. So we got two apostles that are named Judas, and in Luke 6, uh, Judas is Thaddeus. So that's who we're talking about, Thaddeus. Judas, by John's reference. But here's the thing that Thaddeus was concerned about, and it was 
um, Lord, how wilt thou manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? The Lord had just said to them in John 14, uh, Brother Danny referred to that yesterday in such a good message to the family in the passing of Brother Judy at her funeral. Then you know, the, um, in reference to the Lord going to prepare a better place for us and we should not um, worry and, and fear and, and all those good things that the Lord is with us and provides. And, and uh, when he was sharing that text in John 14, the beginning of the chapter, they said, you know, how are we, how are you going to manifest yourself to us and not to the world? But he did manifest himself unto them. And the world's going to learn about him in the following verses through the Holy Spirit. His answer, verse 23. He answered, If a man love me, you'll keep my words, and my Father will love him. We'll come unto him, we'll make our abode with him. You want to know how I'm going to be manifested to you? He that loved me not, keepeth not my sayings, and the word which he hears not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things I have spoken unto you while being yet present with you. Now here it is. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things, and he will bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So Thaddeus, you are wanting to know about uh, how I'm going to be manifested unto you, but not unto the world. How are we going to keep this separate apart? It will come through the help of the Holy Spirit. He will guide you in your understanding. He will guide you in your preaching and teaching. So, I don't know if Brother Thaddeus was a father or not, but there's a principle about him that's very, very good. He was concerned about the growth of the kingdom. He was concerned about the will of God. That's the kind of fathers that we certainly need. F-A-T-H. Well, i chosen Hezekiah. Hezekiah was a reform-minded king of Judah, Hezekiah. His father was a worshiper of Baal, Ahaz, and sad to say, his son who followed Hezekiah also went back into idolatry like his grandfather, and his name was Manassas. But for a period of time, Hezekiah worked very hard to reform Judah. He broke down the idols and he tore down their images and, and he set things right in the nation for a good period of time. But you know the story is told in Isaiah 38 that he had a visit one time and the visit was from Isaiah to him that his house needed to be set in order that he was going to die and not live. So there were some things in Hezekiah's life that needed to be changed. He could have had him killed because he was the king, but what he did was, the Bible says he prayed and he shed tears over his condition before God. And our father said, I've seen your tears and I've heard your prayers. And I'm going to give you 15 years. Hezekiah is a great example of fathers who need to be concerned with compassion for situations where there is the need for that. Prayers and tears can both be a great factor in rearing a family and helping a family. It's not a weakness to shed tears in all situations. Sometimes it is a weakness. But sometimes when tears are shed, it's a strength. Some of the greatest, most powerful of athletes and of leaders in this world have shed tears. One time as a little boy, I asked my dad, my dad who was bigger than life, who was the strongest, most powerful influence on my life of all, I said to him as a little boy, Daddy, did you ever cry? Have you ever shed a tear? He said, yeah, I did when my mama died. Well, that was sort of hard for me to sort of picture how that was. But strong men weep sometimes. And certainly we weep, or strong men weep, when they are motivated because of sin or wrongfulness in their life. They want to get it corrected. Father, our Father in heaven said, I've seen your tears and I've heard your prayers. And he was blessed to have 15 more years. Fathers, we pray for you and pray for us all that we could be strong in that regard. It would be such a great asset to our family if we, like Hezekiah, could be men of tears and strength and men of prayer always. F. Fortinez, A. Abraham, T. Thaddeus, H. Hezekiah, E. Oh, 
He is the Ezra? No. What about Elisha? No, he's a good one. Eli? No, Eli had some problems. Uh, Elijah. Yeah, Elijah. He, he was the most, the greatest prophet of the Old Testament, the commentary said. Elijah. Elijah, most famous, I guess, for his battle with um, King Ahab and Queen Jezebel. 1 Kings chapter 18. And he fought the prophets of Baal, 450 of them. He was all by himself. He was the only one. But he stood strong and he defeated them with the good father's help. And his courage was so outstanding. Elijah courageously taking all these enemies on and trying and showing them the people who the true God was. He even had the strength to sort of ridicule these men. Where's your God? He hasn't answered your prayers to the heathen opposition. Maybe he's going to sleep. Maybe he's asleep. Maybe he's going on a trip. Maybe he's taking a vacation. And they tried everything in the world, but they could not raise anything from their false gods. But he with the true God was able to demonstrate power from heaven that God was with him. Elijah was a man of courage. We as fathers need courage. Pray for us to be more courageous. To have the courage to stand for truth and right and courage to overcome challenges that stand before us. Courage in our own lives to admit when we're wrong like Hezekiah and to repent when we need to repent and know the, the, let the family know that. Families know that parents aren't perfect but I hope and pray they always know that we want to do the right thing and are trying to do the right thing once we've done wrong. So it was with Elijah that he had the courage to face opposition and wrong situations in his life. May we have that same courage. And then they are. Here's certainly a character not well known. I could have chosen Reuben. Uh, he's the brother of Joseph that was one of the good brothers. Maybe the only good brother Joseph had, I guess, besides Benjamin. Reuben was going to go back and get him out of the pit when nighttime came. But when he came back, the little brother was gone and sold to the Ishmaelites. That was Reuben. He's a good one. But I chose an old brother, Rufus. Did you know there was a brother, Rufus, in the Bible? Now, that had been a hard name to go to Parkview School with, too, if he was named Rufus. Old Rufus. What about Rufus? Well... You might be surprised, maybe not. Some of you are pretty good uh, Bible students. What about uh, Mark chapter 15 and verse 21? When our Lord is carrying His cross through the streets of Jerusalem, He's lost a lot of blood because they scourged Him and ripped His back into pieces with those whips. He's lost a lot of blood. He's mighty weak. He's carried His cross for a ways until he can't carry it any farther. And so we read in uh, verse 21, and they compelled one of the centurion, probably one of the Roman soldiers, compelled Simon, a Cyrenian, who's standing in the crowd, coming out of the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to bear his cross. He's a father. Got two boys that we're going to see in another reference in just a moment. Wonder if those boys, what he could have sat and talked to them about on occasions. Boys, I was there. I carried his cross. You really were, Daddy? I was there, son. I saw the way they treated you. I saw it all in my own eyes. Boys, we have a Savior. His name is Jesus, and I carry his cross. Mm. Paul makes reference to Brother Rufus in Romans 16 and verse 13. Thank you, Josh. Salute Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother. Paul knew his mother and my mother. So is it a greeting about Brother Rufus is him and his mother. But look at that, chosen in the Lord. That's what I'm looking for. Rufus, chosen in the Lord. Chosen by the gospel, the invitation to become a child of God, repent of sins and become a New Testament Christian. That's an offer that's offered to you today too. You could be one of the Lord's chosen by 
faith, repentance, and baptism into Christ, or be restored, the Lord be fallen away. We don't always have an opportunity to make things different, but today you can make a difference, you know what? Fathers, we need, like Rufus, get our priorities in place and to be chosen in the Lord by the gospel and the message and the hope that it contains. We looked at the description and the cross stick of Father with the hope and the prayer that it might motivate some of us who want to be better fathers or others here that might make the right decision that they've been away from their heavenly father and they need to come to him in simple obedience. faith. You can do that today. We hope and pray you will. You'll never make a greater decision in your life than to serve the Lord. The Lord Jesus, who suffered and bled and died on a cruel cross, that we could have forgiveness of sins. Our Father, which art in heaven, no greater description could you be given than to think of the Heavenly Father. If we're subject, would you come and we stand and sing?